Mr. Chairman, dear George, thanks a lot for the kind invitation. As you know, uh, mitral valve prolapse is a huge topic and mitral annular disjunction is a new, new entity with new data and also conflicting data. So my agenda is why this problem structure arose, definition and prevalence, how to diagnose MAD, the functional implication, and MAD and arrhythmias. Uh, we know that independently and beyond mitral regurgitation, mitral valve prolapse uh, has been associated with an increased risk for sudden death, stroke, endocarditis, and MAR in patients with the classic prolapse, but in some series. And uh, in terms of the evolution of mitral valve prolapse, we know that the non-diagnostic mitral valve prolapse may evolve into the true mitral valve prolapse and uh, progresses to significant mitral regurgitation in approximately one-fourth of individuals in the community. Therefore, uh, depending on genetics, uh, different phenotypes, may, may, we may evolve towards the majority of benign or no relevant evolution, in one fourth to significant MR, and in other in arrhythmias, including atrial fibrillation, ventricular ectopic beats, and also sudden death. In terms of the sudden death, we know that uh, the cases are confined to young ladies with the redundant mitral valve prolapse, by leaflet during stress, and generally with non-severe mitral regurgitation. Unfortunately, is a very uncommon situation. So why this problem arose? Uh, in the Padua group 2015, in an autoptic study, they showed that uh, in approximately 650 cases, they had 43 patients with sudden cardiac death with isolated mitral valve prolapse. They also showed the ventricular arrhythmias. And uh, they concluded this first study that MVP is an underestimated cause of arrhythmic sudden cardiac death, that there was fibrosis of the papillary muscles and inferior lateral left ventricular wall, and that contrast and onset at CMR may help to identify this problem. The year after 2016, they showed that uh, in 36 patients with late gadolinium enhancement on CNR and in other without, they may have in these cases with severe uh, arrhythmias, uh, a constant feature which was mad and related with LV fibrosis. And the reason with this hypothesis was the mechanical stretch of the inferior basal wall and papillary muscles. Thus, they concluded in 2019 that there is a sort of so-called arrhythmic mitral valve prolapse syndrome, and that, that arrhythmia arising close to the prolapsing leaflet and adhesion structure, uh, which are the arrhythmic triggers. Fortunately, they estimated the occurrence of sudden cardiac death is still very low. So the evidence was for a structural myocardial substrate of electrical instability and scary at the level of the papillary muscles with adhesion free wall in all of the cases and of the inferobasal wall in 88% of these young victims. And they uh, tried to describe a clinical profile characterized by a patient, usually a female, in mostly bileaflet myxomatous disease, mid systolic click, repolarization abnormalities, and complex ventricular arrhythmias, and generally without significant regurgitation. But the actual prevalence of this problem uh, remained to be established. And uh, the hypothesis was that MAD may lead to a systolic, of systolic cardiac motion abnormal mitral leaflet traction, regional stretch and friction, mitral valve myxomatous degeneration, hypertrophy and fibrosis, ectopic foci, and mitral valve incompetence in other, and this may generate malignant ventricular arrhythmias. 
So which is the definition and prevalence of this entity? The definition is a separation between the atrial wall, mitral valve junction, and left ventricular attachment. One of the first uh, description was in an autopsy first case by uh, this author, 1981, and later on by Angelini, with the de depiction of a mitral annulus observed both in normal and prolapsing mitral valve, this sort of curtain like annulus in this region. This is an example. You may observe this the curling of the, the, of the LV, the end systolic uh, mitral valve prolapse, a mild regurgitation, a mild leaflet prolapse, and this uh, new entity, which is a disjunction of uh, this region. It has also been shown that uh, CMR is uh, a very, a very ideal method to evaluate this disjunction. And uh, all this data may be confusing because of some technical uh, problems. In particular, the absence of mud in diastolic frames and a sort of gradual increase in the depth of the leaflet prolapse in systolic frames. This may lead to a wrongly interpreted and measured as mud. However, obviously, histologically, the space and show that the mud is irrespective of the systolic or diastolic phase. But the majority of study evaluated MAD on the insistory. This is an example of the diastolic frame with the hinge of the leaflet, which is correctly inserted, while the systolic frame clearly showed MAD and also is the transparency of this entity. So there are several open problems, and in particular, which is the sensitivity and accuracy of different imaging methods, and uh, is there a cutoff value for a true or pathological MAD? Uh, this author, Lee, described MAD in approximately 42% of cases with mitral valve collapse by TE, and uh, he showed 8.9 millimeter of this data. And uh, he described this with TE and also that this disjunctive annulus displayed a sort of paradoxical systolic dilatation in flattening and is associated with more diffuse leaflet deformity. But going to more specific uh, and selected population, we generally uh, view cases with uh, uh, severe regurgitation in our hospital and undergoing mitral valve repair. We know they have a freedom from reoperation up to 25 years with excellent survival. And several authors also showed that the mortality is similar to that of the general population and a very low incidence of reoperation. So it is difficult to imagine in these cases uh, very severe uh, arrhythmias. Uh, and in fact, we tried to evaluate this problem in. Uh, cases with significant regurgitation undergoing mitral valve repair in our uh, hospital. In the approximately 1,000 cases, we showed the prevalence of MAD approximately 16%. And we also showed that it was more, uh, the length of the MAD was higher in Barlow than in FED. And going into a more selected population, who had free examination, TT, CMR, and transesophageal, we show different cutoff and different percentage. If we uh, had a six millimeter or more, we see that the percentage with the free methods is very similar, 14%, 15%, 19%, while if the distance of the CM of MAD was very low, two, two millimeter, the percentage was very different, and TT showed MAD only 17%, while CMR in up to 42%. So the conclusion in this first study was that different diagnostic methods are not interchangeable, and the MAD varies considering different cutoff values. For this reason, several editorials shows that uh, 
The diagnosis of MAD raises more questions than answer. And is MAD really a clinical entity? In fact, 2021, uh, this uh, Japanese group showed that in 98 patients with a structural normal heart, CT showed MAD in 96%, where the disjunction had a very small disjunction, approximately three millimeters. And they uh, had this conclusion that the superior spatial resolution CT supports disjunction is a very common component of the normal architecture. And disjunction really encircles the entire attachment of the posterior matter leaflet. And so the optimal threshold value need far further investigation. And uh, some editorials after this paper uh, pose this question, is MAD really normal or is a pathological entity? And we had a very new, uh, recently a new perspective to better define MAD. In particular, Franco Faletra and his group tried to evaluate which is really the normal inch point of the mitral leaflet and had two hypotheses. One that the inch point may lead to MAD for a slit annulus or a stretched annulus. And they concluded that we may have a normal or pseudo MAD with a sort of systolic pseudo MAD with a normal hinge point of the leaflet or a true MAD with a true uh, abnormal insertion of the leaflet, both in systole and in diastole. So there is a sort of <coughs> apparent MAD, which is more frequent than the true MAD, in which of these two different anatomical substrates are prevalent uh, remains unclear. But please note this pseudo MAD with uh, this curtain like uh, position of the leaflet with the normal hinge point, and the true MAD with the abnormal hinge point with both TT, T and CMR. In terms of prognosis, MVP is generally described as a benign entity with a widely varying prognostic spectrum. And there is a variable prevalence on the arrhythmias which has been reported. But returning to one of my first slide, the incidence of subduct cardiac death is estimated as very low generally in the majority of studies with an annual rate of 0.2.8% annual rate. But we know that in all cases with uh, uh, the potential cardiac sunk and death, even in athletes, we uh, do not rely only on imaging. And uh, in this uh, paper by, with, by our electrophysiologists, we need obviously clinical history, AKG, buffer to rest and exercise, monitoring, altering, genetics, in some cases, biopsy and or electrophysiological studies. And in this recent review uh, on uh, sudden death and mitral valve prolapse, the, the, this author concluded that uh, the risk factor associated with these problems are generally female sex, Bileaflet prolapse with marked leaflet redundancy, mitral annulus abnormalities, AKG changes, and presence of myocardial fibrosis at the level of papillary muscle. But uh, the most common site uh, of the, the origin of the premature bit is the posterior basal portion of the left ventricle at the level of papillary muscle, or they are of fascicular origin. For this reason, we are trying to uh, evaluate new findings uh, by uh, ECHO and also CMR. In terms of ECHO, <clears throat> we try to evaluate this systolic curling, which is an unusual systolic motion of the posterior mitral ring on adhesion myocardium. So there is a stretch towards the, the, my, the mitral valve of the papillary muscle and an opposite motion with the stretch towards the apex of the LV posterior uh, wall. This 
uh, determine some very clear signs that we very uh, that are very historical. The typical M mode in end systole, the typical end systolic regurgitation, and this new sign. The term is the Pickenhaube spike. Uh, the Pickenhaube is a German helmet, and uh, this is due by tissue doppler because the adhesion posterior basal wall uh, is pulled sharply toward the apex with a very, very high velocity at this level. For the same reason, other authors, in particular the group by Francesca Delling, show that we may also evaluate a sort of mechanical dispersion that may help identify patient at a higher arrhythmic risk. And we confirm this uh, problem with uh, a uh, CMR study evaluating the T1 mapping uh, tracking with, in mitral valve collapse. And we showed that there is a subclinical left ventricular tissue changes exactly the mid basal left ventricle efferolateral wall showed by longer T1 with reduced circumferential and radial strains. But we have also two uh, different phenotypes on mitral valve prolapse. We know the heterogeneity of this syndrome. And considering the current controversies surrounding this junction, these observations are critical and calling for detailed research in the future. And this author tried to schematically represent that in Barlow, MAD is higher, eight millimeters, with a MAD extent, a circumferential extent of uh, approximately 90%. There is a form thrust with the MAD, which is only four millimeter, with a MAD extent of 30%. And finally, the fed, more older patient with the MAD only 1.5 with the extent of only 30%. There are also authors that go against the grain. Uh, this paper, they showed the severe ventricular arrhythmias in only 90 patients with MAD, uh, uh, showed that they were more, more prevalent in MAD without mitral this is a confounding data, but anyway, they showed in an important journal, Journal Maker College, that arrhythmias were frequent irrespective of mitral valve collapse, indicated an arrhythmic risk of a mitral annular disjunction itself. Going to the prognosis, uh, if we see some uh, anti-mortem, post-mortem study, in a later mitral valve prolapse, mitral valve prolapse was identified in 1% of the 600 presumed subject cardiac death in this series. And uh, if they review also echo of these cases, they had a prevalence of at least 2% uh, cases of presumed subject cardiac death and 4% among SADs. I will just give you this definition. The SADs with the autopsy defined SAD arrhythmic death and no SAD when there is not this definition. And in uh, this other study, Maurice Enrique Serrano very recently studied a cohort of approximately 600 cases, the majority were men. They were consecutive patients with isolated mitral valve collapse. Unfortunately, they were a very heterogeneous population. Anyway, they try to evaluate the outcomes and they divide, divided cases with and without MAD and they evaluate the outcome of all these cases and also a matched survival analysis in patients with and without MAD. The main results were that in the unmatched cohort, MAD was associated with more severe arrhythmias and, and late also after the diagnosis and mad association with arrhythmic events persisted but with the risk after surgery in this post-operative cohort did not reach significant and in the age matched cohort overall 
under medical management and also in post-op, they had that mud was always associated with more arrhythmias. But fortunately, in terms of the survival, in patients with and without mud, the survival at 10 years was uh, uh, very close to 1%. And so, in conclusion, in this paper, the central illustration showed that mitral alveolar disjunction may be related to younger age, larger LV, redundant leaflet, bilateral prolapse, and uh, <clears throat> despite there is uh, a, an association with uh, the arrhythmic events, the survival was very good in, uh, in both groups. And in conclusion, this paper showed that the presence of MAD was independently associated with long-term excess incidence of clinical arrhythmic events, but in the first 10 years post-diagnosis, MAD was not linked to excess mortality, and uh, we should have a careful monitoring of arrhythmias in, uh, in order, in, uh, is in order for these cases with MAD. I add my personal opinion in cases undergoing surgery. Some patients may be candidates, obviously, for surgery because of a severity of mitral regurgitation. And nowadays, it is important to remember that no statistically significant data describe the evolution of a ventricular arrhythmias burden after surgery and whether surgical mitral valve repair may really reduce the overall arrhythmic risk. So I'm going to conclude that there is a never-ending story of mitral valve prolapse. When I was young, the prevalence of, in the 80s was of mitral valve prolapse was 30%. Now we know is 3% due to the story of the saddle shape, 2D and 3D story and Fed versus Barlow, surgery of mitral valve prolapse with uh, at least 95% of cases reparability. And now we have the ardimogenic mitral valve prolapse and MAD. Over these 50 years, the research was devoted to chasing the dream of the ideal valve morphology. You see all the evolution of echocardiography. And nowadays, in few seconds, with the trust thoracic approach, we may evaluate this P2 prolapse without any problem or by TE, we may evaluate a P1 prolapse with fibroelastic deficiency of the Barlow disease with all this scallop involved. And with the new uh, translucency and uh, new transillumination data, we may evaluate very nicely the cordial rupture, the annulus, all the data, or the fragility of the leaflet uh, as in this case uh, with the sort of, uh, uh, of holes and the fragility of this P2 um, prolapse. I also remind you that uh, the annulus uh, is uh, very different uh, in controls, normal subject approximately eight centimeters square, the fibroelastic deficiency 12 centimeters square in this case study by my Group, our group and the Chicago group, but in Barlow is up to 15 centimeters square. So there, there are a lot of difference in the, the area of this data. And we also demonstrated that we may predict reparability or recurrence of mitral regurgitation after mitral valve surgical repair with just a simple transthoracic 3D. So uh, we hope that we shall also predict severe arrhythmia in patients with mitral valve prolapse with some typical signs. And for this reason, the Padua group proposed this workup. Obviously, echo with the typical or classic diagnosis of mitral valve prolapse, the personal history, particularly female, the physical examination with the click, the rest AKG, AKG changes with the inversion of the T wave in inferior lateral leads, the halter with the arrhythmias in the ECO TT and TA data, particularly with MAD and CAM. And then in selected cases going to CMR or electrophysiological studies, and obviously these are selected 
cases. So in conclusion, patient with an arrhythmia suspecting matter valve perhaps based on symptoms, baseline EKG or T should then be referred for more advanced TTE examination, MAD, curling, pickle hole, sign, mechanical dispersion. And in selected cases, we may have a pivotal role of CMR, non-invasive detection of myocardial focal fibrosis, and uh, finally, in selected cases, obviously, in a study. This is uh, uh, a, a sort of a schematic representation for a recent review we, we published in diagnostics. And uh, we believe that this validation high risk feature related to mitral valve collapse on TTE should prompt closure, clinical follow up, particularly in bileaflet uh, cases with MAD and obviously CMR showing LV fibrosis and the other side. So thanks a lot for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Pepe, for your excellent presentation in this uh, special field. Um, so um, you said that uh, after surgical correction of the valve, the ventricular burden does not reduce. So in those patients, we have to, 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 to proceed in, uh, in ventricular defibrillator or the pharmaceutical therapy. What's your recommendation? Uh, it's, a, it's a very good question because uh, we know that there are discordant data concerning the surgical uh, results. Generally, the majority uh, has not uh, uh, evaluated any sort of very dramatic situation in this uh, long-term follow-up. Obviously, in some selected cases, we may have uh, significant uh, mitral, valve, uh, mitral valve regurgitation, repair, and arrhythmic uh, uh, malignant uh, uh, data. And in these cases, the data are constant. Some have, have uh, demonstrated a improvement of the arrhythmic burden after surgery and other didn't. So we have just to concentrate on the arrhythmic burden and then have a very good monitoring of these cases. And in some cases we need uh, arrhythmic drugs or uh, also ICD, but it's a very, very minority of the cases. Any question from the audience? Yorgos, Dr. Athanasopoulos. Mauro, it is more than a great pleasure to have you with us. Uh, it was a very enlightened contribution to this very complex topic. Uh, if the mitral valve apparatus um, is uh, uh, considered to be uh, properly adjusted for surgery, th things are simple. Uh, we have the proper surgeons, the proper modalities to intervene. Uh, the main clinical problem arises when you don't have any evidence for surgical intervention. Sure. And you have to deal with the patient with all these clinical phenomena you uh, thoroughly described before. Uh, it is of paramount importance your contribution to understand the uh, term of uh, pseudo uh, mad as it was introduced by Francesco, by Paletra. Uh, in practice, you remember the letter to the editor that uh, Magdalena uh, Garby uh, wrote about your paper, stating that we have to be aware sure. of these peculiarities for MRI. MRI is not the gold standard. <laughs> and uh, I think Francesco uh, contributed to this issue very elegantly. Uh, in practice, uh, I have to confess that these data, uh, these literature data, are not referred to any treatment to these patients. We know that there is a sympathetic overactivity 
Professor Budulas, a long time ago, has mentioned this story. And in clinical practice, uh, we have to apply properly beta blockers in these patients. And uh, I'm very disappointed that in the literature there, are, there, are, there is positive data on this issue. In practice, uh, I can tell you, although the personal stories are not uh, the research-driven protocols, I have uh, obliged to handle three scenarios with ladies who are eager uh, to, have, uh, uh, to have child. They have been advised not to be pregnant due to this phenomenon. All these three, three patients of mine, at the end of the day, under the proper treatment, are now mothers. So this phenomena has to be considered very prudently. And uh, I have to thank you once again for your very elegant and practical contribution to this very difficult topic. Well, Georgia, thanks a lot for uh, your comments. I completely agree with everything. Uh, the main problem now is to be very cautious. MAD is not this uh, terrible problem. We have to go to arrhythmic phases and then go more selectively to have the good diagnosis and to have good trials or you know studies concerning the ideal treatment. And obviously, beta blockers are the, in the, the first step in these cases. Thanks a lot. Is a, is, a, is a mute, Costa is a mute. That's a kume. Costa, that's a kume, the microphone is in the other side. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Pepe, for your excellent presentation.